We wanted to see how those 30 people have been doing, so we reunited the former governor and a woman she set free. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> I'm good. Good to see you. You do. You're looking good. Great, well, thank you. Good Tell us what you're doing nowadays. This time last year, Colleen Johnson was learning to live as a free woman. Before her November 2018 commutation, she had served two years of a 12-year sentence. I got into pain medications, actually, from doctors. Then came Xanax and later meth. She went to prison on a simple possession charge, but despite all that she's been through... Prison saved my life. I don't regret prison. I do not regret prison. I'm thankful I went to prison. Now she has a job, a baby on the way, and a deep appreciation for the act of mercy that allowed her to be released. I know I want to do good because I appreciate what you did. You know, I, I, I truly appreciate you going out and saying, okay, look, I'm going to give these guys a chance, you know, because nobody else ever gave us a chance. In the past, DOC gave inmates $50 and a bus ticket when they walked out of the gate. This group was given substantial help. Just just knowing that you're not alone. I'm not alone in this and that I'm not I'm not the person I used to be. Former Governor Mary Fallon attributes the group's success to careful vetting and intensive help from nonprofit partners when they left prison. And I actually had a sheet of paper with each of the inmates' names and it had their name and then it had specific services and who specifically mm -hmm. would be helping you. Fallon says granting the group its freedom was one of the most personally rewarding things she did as governor. You know, I'm a person that believes in God of second chances and Amen I believe that. everybody deserves a second chance that's willing to try. Chris Steele's Education and Employment Ministry, or TEAM, was instrumental in helping to wipe away more than 60 years of cumulative prison time. The group chose the inmates and helped them through the process. It was more a matter of identifying people who were serving excessive prison sentences for drug possession uh, and then connecting them with resources that would give them the best opportunity to be successful in the community. Most of the people Fallon released that day have stayed out of trouble. They set the precedent for the much larger commutation that followed. And I think that the, the success of these original 30 led to the discussion that took place in the legislature this past session to say, you know what, it really ought to be that the reforms that the people voted in through state question 780 ought to be applied retroactively. The group's success doesn't surprise Steele. They are working. They have either reconnected or are in the process of reconnecting with their families. Um, their dreams, their desires, their goals are no different than mine or yours. Readjusting to life on the outside has been tough. Sometimes small things don't seem small, like taking a walk without being paranoid or hearing the jingling of keys. When I hear keys, I always think of guards and I kind of stop and freeze. Johnson's gratitude is obvious. She described the day she received the call from Fallon telling her she was getting out. Besides having my child, one of the best feelings I've ever had. It almost dropped me to my knees. Maggie Carlo, KOCO 5 News.